Today, I am fortunate to be able to ride the Canyon Spectral 29er CF. It's a pretty lightweight bike and a nice build out with some carbon handlebars and carbon cranks. So one thing to note is uh, we actually received the global spec with a pike and a deluxe rear shock and the North American spec comes a little bit burlier with a Fox 36 and a DPX2 in the rear. It's definitely feels like one of the better pedaling kind of horse link yoke style bikes I've been on. When you're climbing it actually, I don't know, to me it kind of feels like it's got 130 millimeters of travel. It's just nice and taut. It really doesn't bog on me at all. I've been running the compression wide open and with a roughly 76 degree seat angle and some 437 chain stays. It's uh, pretty good at tractoring up some of the steeper climbs without kind of fighting you. Yeah, I've become uh, quite a fan of like the 150, 150 travel setup on this bike. It's like just by, you know, not going with a 160 travel in the front just makes this bike a little bit more agile feeling and honestly just like a little bit more of an all-rounder just one of those bikes just really encourages you to get out and pedal because it just doesn't fight you as much as some of the bigger bikes and just the kinematics of the rear end definitely feel like it's got some more anti-squat than you know, other bikes in the kind of horse link category. It's just one of those bikes that I'm really drawn to because it keeps the weight down. And then at the same time, you've got like a 485 reach, 437 chain stay, keep you nice and stable at speed. Been pretty stoked about some of the spec choices they went with this build. It's got like a 3C, Maxis Dissector tire on the rear, which I've been really impressed by and just seems to roll pretty good, which accentuates this bike's performance. And then I have not been spooked by it once on the way down. Just seems to grip really well. Classic DHF up front, also with 3C, so Canyon's not cutting any corners. This bike is so poppy and jibby and just, as I always say, like the type of bike that you take out for the day really does kind of determine my style of riding for the day. It's like, I'll just hop on this bike and just want to pop around more, have fun, pump stuff a little bit harder. So it just rewards it, even on this like flat cross country style train. I'm just not bummed that I'm on this bike. It's so, so light when you pull it up. Time for the main attraction. Wow, yeah, this bike just, even on this flat stuff out of the saddle, just feels so poppy. And that super deluxe with the rear linkage, it's very interesting. It has this kind of like damp and support and feel, supported feel, but then also pretty bottomless feeling. It's such a playful bike too. Yeah, just such a strange mixture of like how with that pike, and 150 millimeters to travel does it feel so so kind of bottom bottomless and plush but at the same time it's like hot feels like such a little flickable bike just has this kind of like intense feeling to it just kind of like an urgency Like the, pla the, the platform of the bike is just really supportive and 
kind of like stiff feeling, which allows you to kind of like put in a lot of rider input. But the crazy thing is, once you get to the kind of like chunky, oh, that berm is so good. Get to the chunky roots. It's like, wow, how does this bike still manage to soak all that stuff up? It just goes to prove that like proper geometry, you know, you really don't need like the stiffest, gnarliest components, but man, that hoo 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 pop. Pop is so good. That frame geometry can just really smooth things out. But man, what what a sick build. And gotta say, 150, 150 feels great out here in the same spots where you know I've been having 170 mil bikes. You can kind of just like dig in a little bit deeper with a bike like this, just push it in and out of every fold of the landscape just a little bit better. Woo. Oh my gosh, trail conditions are just so good today. It's been like a month of soup. And today is so spectacular. It's a bit mind blowing to me like how light and easy to climb this bike feels, but at the same time, once you open it up on the, you know, kind of fast, Rudy, techy stuff. It's like, wow, this thing really feels stable. Like that 437 rear end, 485 reach. It's like, oh my gosh. Just really, it's like 150 feels like plenty of travel, at least for chucking it. Another thing I've noticed about this bike is the frame construction is just pretty solid. Just feels real, real chunky like it can handle some big hits. It's just like, almost feels like maybe the type of carbon they use, but I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like I can, you know, be so much more selective about my lines on this bike. You could just grab this bike and hang on, but this one in particular is just so good for a rider who's selective about line choice. Ooh, a weird hole. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, very pleasantly surprised with how these uh, particular G2 brakes feel. These are the RSCs. And uh, yeah, they actually have quite a bit of stopping power. So I'm not sure what the story is there. If they're a new model year, but kudos to SRAM. These things feel great. Canyon kind of with their like marketing materials claim to set out to make like the one bike to do all trails and my goodness, yeah, they've definitely accomplished that. It's such a good balance of just that happy feeling sensation that I really love in a bike while at the same time like, yeah, you can just let go and let the suspension do the work for you as well. Just big hits. Frame soaks it up. But then when you're kind of pumping along, like wow, this bike doesn't feel big and cumbersome at all. It feels so good. And I find myself just popping off things more than I would. I'm just having a more playful time. It's stable without feeling sluggish which can be kind of a fine line, you know, with today's bikes getting bigger, slacker, more capable. This thing just really retains that zippiness that we all love about smaller bikes, but also gives you the capabilities of getting gnarly like you're on a big bike. Another standout thing is just like kinematics on the rear end. Yeah, they're kind of going for like soft up top, slight middle ramp up, and then, you know, super heavy final ramp up. And they definitely crush that with the kinematics. It's just, whoo, 
it really is quite supple up top and then there's just no chance of bottoming that thing out you know it's not quite like a hover bike but i prefer this sensation i had to reset a little bit up the mountain so who who is this bike for i'd say this bike is definitely for somebody looking you know for an all-around bike it's just phenomenal for that but somebody who's going to be pedaling quite a bit and somebody who wants a bike that's really lightweight and lively kind of like easy to jump and somebody who's more like picking all their lines down the landscape than just hanging on this would be a super fun bike to race on like most race courses honestly just the perfect one bike quiver somebody who spends a lot of time riding like national forest trails or long days in the wilderness so if you like this review woo, big tree down oh i should have hopped it thing came out of nowhere anyway if you like this review consider subscribing to our youtube channel and for the full write-up you can head on over to the magazine website for you have mag.com